and tales for dark nights. The following performance is a third round entry in the 2016 Evil Idol voice acting competition. And you, the listener, get to help decide who wins. If you'd like to hear more of this contestant, voting for them is simple and only takes a moment. Just click the thumbs up icon. Can't stand them? Then click the thumbs down icon instead and cast them into the digital nether realm from whence they came. You decide their fate. Good luck to all of our contestants. How I Became a Vegetarian Written by Common Grackle Performed by Ashley Arndt For Chilling Tales for Dark Nights and the Evil Idol Competition My ex-husband and I divorced on better terms than most. Frank was always a good father to our three-year-old son. And, deep down, I think he still loved me. But truth be told, he was never that bright. And a pretty huge pushover. That's why I was surprised, but not absolutely shocked, when he came home one day to confess that he'd cheated on me with a co-worker. He told me like a car salesman pitching a deal. It's not really cheating, though, honey. Lola opened my eyes to everything. We're all just animals. Monogamy isn't natural. I didn't choose Lola over you. I'm choosing her and you, Frank said. His eyes were wide and his smile genuine. To my utter disgust, he believed what he was saying. I sent him packing that day. Fortunately for me, Lola didn't believe it was natural for her to raise another person's offspring, so I ended up with full custody of Henry without a fight. There was the occasional overnight visit at his dad's house, but I tried to keep them as limited as I could while still allowing Henry to have a relationship with his father. To be perfectly honest, I couldn't stand Lola. Not only was she a homewrecker, yes, I totally acknowledge that my ex had an equal part in cheating, but she was also batshit insane. I don't have anything against vegans in general, but Lola was a vegan on a militant level. When Henry asked his dad if he could have chicken nuggets for dinner during a visit, Lola had some choice words for him. We are animals too, Henry. We don't eat our own kind. It's wrong. You're little yet, so you can't be blamed. But your mommy is a bad, bad mommy if she lets you eat our poor murdered sisters and brothers. This broke my little Henry's heart, and he made Frank call me to pick him up. Naturally, his father didn't try to correct Lola's words, coward as he was. Am I bad, Mommy? He asked on the drive home. No, honey, no. You're such a good boy. Lola's crazy, I said. He reached his hand to my arm from his booster seat behind me. You're not a bad Mommy he said, tears welling up in his eyes. You bet I bought that kid chicken nuggets on the way home. I was ready to wring that woman's neck. But instead, I tried to be the adult and called my ex to explain why what happened was unacceptable. He agreed with me and promised it wouldn't happen again. But the thing is... He always agrees with the person talking to him. I wasn't necessarily reassured that the issue wouldn't happen again, but I did feel better after giving him a piece of my mind. It was about a month later that the break-in happened. 
When I got home after picking Henry up for daycare, we found our house absolutely trashed. I took Henry back to the car and called the police. Once the officers had given us the all clear and verified no one was still in the house, I left Henry in front of my laptop with a snack and my neighbor Totoro playing and went to speak to the cops. The house looked completely ransacked and there was a good deal missing. Most notably, my kitchen was pretty much emptied. I had been a bit of an amateur chef for a while and had a great deal of quality cookware. My all-clad, Le Creuset, Nori Take, and Crock-Pot brand cookware and dishes had all been stolen, along with my carefully chosen Wusthof knife set and all of my flatware. It was surprising to me what the thieves had chosen to take, but the cops explained that in robberies, often what is easiest to pawn is what is taken. My laptop would have been too easily traceable, and my TV was too big to take in a time crunch. As the police took their photos and I began my list of stolen items to turn into my insurance company, my heart sank deep into my stomach. Our cat, Penelope, hadn't greeted us yet. I dropped my notebook and began searching the house. Here, kitty kitty. I called from room to room with increasing desperation. No cat answered my call. My fears were confirmed after I had checked the last of Penelope's usual hiding places. Our cat was gone. The police told us there was nothing they could do about the cat. It was most likely that she had simply escaped while the robbery was taking place. Naturally, Henry was devastated. We posted flyers around the neighborhood and checked regularly with local animal shelters, but nothing came of it. Penelope was an indoor cat and didn't have an identifying tag or even a collar. Frank was surprisingly supportive during our recovery from the theft and pet loss. He brought dinner for us that night. It was vegan, but the thought was nice, and even slept over on the couch because Henry was scared the bad guys might come back. I was pretty impressed with the way Frank stepped up in our time of crisis. So when he told me that Lola wanted to have a dinner, just me and her to clear the air, I said I'd think about it. After all, I was an adult and could just leave as she started acting crazy. Over a month passed since the robbery, and there was no sign of the cat and no official invitation from Lola. Not that we hadn't heard from her entirely. She had sent Frank over with a piece of meteorite that she claimed would protect us from any further misfortune. Although, I wasn't sure what information she was basing that belief on. Included with the meteorite was a note explaining that we shouldn't be sad our cat got out because keeping a pet locked up in a house is wrong. She even went so far as to say the thieves probably took it upon themselves to free Penelope from the tyranny of man. What a comforting and thoughtful gift, right? I'd nearly forgotten about Frank's request that I consider a dinner with her when I got a text from a number I didn't have saved in my phone. Would you like to have dinner with me tomorrow? It would be cruelty-free, of course. I hope that doesn't offend you. I'd give you three guesses at who sent the text, but I bet you'd only need one. Eating vegan didn't offend me, but her text definitely got my dander up. Fortunately, I was too tired to worry much about the text. Or how bitchy it was. Dealing with the insurance company to replace our stolen items was becoming a second job in itself, and I was not up for an argument. Sure, we can have dinner, I typed back. See you at 5.15, she said. There was no way I was going to subject my son to another meal with Lola, 
so I made arrangements to drop Henry off at his grandparents for a sleepover. They were happy to have him for the night, and Henry was able to get his mind off of his still-missing cat. It was a win-win. For them, at least. I still had to suffer through dinner with crazy. Repeating over and over to myself that keeping a good relationship with Frank, and therefore Lola, was important to my son's mental health. I set off to my ex's house. When I got there, I was surprised to see how normal the meal looked. Despite how obnoxious she was, Lola had clearly made an effort to create a passable meal substitute for our dinner. While the food passed for normal, the home decor certainly didn't. A large chart showing the locations of the chakras was painted on the wall. Each chakra had its own shelf with a brightly colored rock on it. No wall was painted the same color as the next, with the kitchen slash dining room being bright yellow, blue, green, and orange. The table was low to the ground and deep purple, with pillows to sit on instead of chairs. Candles of every possible shape and color sat on any available flat surface. If this were anyone else's home, I might have considered it to be a quirky fun style. But it was Lola's, so I considered it a testament to her crazy personality instead. Frank won't be joining us for dinner. He had to stay late at work, she said. She ushered me toward a cushion and gestured for me to sit. I'm so glad you could come. I know this isn't the most ideal situation for us, and I thought it would be nice if we could, like, find some common ground, you know? She asked. Common ground? Like what? I asked. Like, I don't know. Maybe you could try not eating our fellow animals? She said. There it was. The Lola we all know and hate. Look, I'm fine with you being vegan. But I'm not. And you're just gonna have to be okay with that. I said, trying to keep my voice as calm as possible. Can we just talk about something else? Maybe you'll change your mind. Someday, she said. I rolled my eyes. Doubt it. Okay, sorry for bringing it up. Let's eat before everything gets cold. I made it special for you, she said. We sat in awkward silence for a while as we ate. I was relieved she was no longer proselytizing, but it was starting to get really uncomfortable. This honestly tastes a bit like real meat. The texture is even spot on, I said. I was actually pretty impressed that beans and soy could be transformed so well. Lola hadn't touched her meat substitute yet, and instead picked daintily at her salad. Oh... It is real, she said. Her voice was casual, as if this was the most normal thing in the world to say. You cooked meat? I asked. I was sure I had misunderstood. Oh, yeah. I didn't know how else to get you to understand, she said. Understand what, exactly? Is this the common ground you're working on? I asked. Yep, exactly. I just needed a way to show you how wrong it is to eat meat, she said. So, you made meat? I asked. Her explanation made no sense. Yeah, but this meat you should recognize. 
I made it special for you, so you could see how sad it is when an animal is killed just to be eaten, she said. Lola was smiling from ear to ear. Why don't you cut off another slice for yourself? She asked happily, handing me a knife. Not just any knife, though. A Wusthof knife. My Wusthof knife. Complete with the dent I'd made in the handle two years ago. She must have seen the recognition on my face because she added, People who use cookware for murder don't deserve to have it. I'm sure you'll understand. She made a frowny face. Or can the big bad carnivore not do it? Different when it's an animal you knew personally, huh? She asked. Penelope. Bile rose in my throat as I ran to the bathroom. My head filled with images of Lola murdering and cooking my cat. Tears ran down my face as I violently retched into the toilet. That's when I saw it. The dried drips of blood down the sides of the pink bathtub. I wasn't sure if I could handle what was beyond the curtain. But wanting to know for sure, to have proof to show Frank how monstrous Lola was, I ripped the curtain back. Blood rushed through my ears, and my breath stopped in my lungs. Yet somehow, a scream ripped through my throat. There in the bathtub, with empty caverns carved out where muscles used to be, lay the corpse of my ex-husband. Lola is now doing life in prison, but it will never feel like justice was completely served. How can any punishment she receives ever make up for Henry losing a father? Or the unending nightmares I will endure for the rest of my life? Penelope eventually made her way home. But what is a cat to a boy who has lost his father? During the court proceedings, Lola freely admitted to what she had done. <laughs> I bet you won't eat meat anymore now, will you? <laughs> this was the last thing she said to me, screaming out the words as she was led away by prison guards. She seemed so proud of herself. As much as I don't want her to have that satisfaction. She's right. I'll never eat meat again. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or thumbs down vote. By doing so, You'll help us determine who will become the next permanent member of our voice acting team. At the close of voting on September 23rd, based on your votes, the top five contestants will progress to the fourth and final round to take place live on October 31st at our annual Halloween live stream event, based entirely on your votes. Thank you for voting and for helping to spread the word. You're listening to Chilling Tales for Dark Nights, I'm Steve Taylor, host of Chilling Tales, the podcast, encouraging you to turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.